some people have asked me how I start my mapping projects. Do I do extensive research? Do I plan out every nook and cranny? Do I draw the map's layout on paper first, finding the perfect floor plan and crafting the perfect gameplay experience? No, I do none of that. I basically don't know what I'm doing until I actually have something that I see potential in. That means that I have numerous test maps that don't really became anything. Just empty skeletons of maps that could have been something, but just didn't have the potential to go anywhere beyond some loose testing. Now, I would like to introduce you to CS Divide, a map I was making for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It looks... pretty rough, and I halted development of it, so it wouldn't get much better than this. This map happened because I wanted to make something where gameplay was the number one priority. The map consists of two islands connected with a bridge. Both islands have a watchtower and some crude cover. One of the islands even has a little spawn area, which looks obviously unfinished. I tried to plan this map out, but ultimately failed to make it good. It took me a while to get back to CSGO mapping too. But this is one of the better versions of Source, so I had to come back one day. So here is GR Warehouse, a map I made specifically for this video. So how did I make it? Well, first I made a general layout of the map. You know, the various areas the map is going to have. This is before determining which part of the map is going to be an outside area, and which is going to be an inside area. After that, I make the outside areas, add the walls and ceilings, and some general lighting. Then I add the detail, props, textures, and better lighting. Of course, playtesting the map the whole way through. After all the things I want have been added, I let it be tested by other people to see if they catch any bugs. Once I got the results back, I start tweaking things to make the map even better. So this is where the map is right now. It's still not finished, but it's definitely getting there. Now hold on just a second, Rigby! Is this not a very weird and stupid way to make maps? Well, it might be. I mean, I had to self-teach myself everything. Reading forums, the developer wiki, oh, and some three clicks Philip videos that helped me a lot with certain things. But not with the workflow, that stuff is completely in my own hands. One thing that I know for sure is a thing is that every map starts out with an idea. For example, for TTT Shitpost Circle, which is a working title by the way, I wanted to create an abandoned school. And for GR Office, I wanted to make a Black Mesa office area. And no, those maps weren't made with a planned layout in mind. I just kinda added to them as I went along. But these are also my earliest maps, so go figure. Anyway, if you want to create maps in the Source engine, just go for it. Chances are that you already have the software on your PC to do it. You got Half-Life 2 installed? Any of the episodes? Well, Hammer should be in the bin folder inside the HL2 install directory. Just give it a spin. As for tutorials, I've included some great sources in the description below for you to check out. Now, I have been asked by multiple people to make tutorials for you guys, but I am going to have to kindly decline that idea, because I'm just not that good yet. I might make a whole mapping series in the future, but as for now, you're going to have to rely on someone else for that. But because I feel bad for leaving you guys without at least telling you the basics, here's how to get a basic level going. Firstly, create a new map by clicking File and New. Four windows will appear. The one on the top left is your camera view. The other windows are the 2D grid views of your map. You got a top one, a front one, and a side one. Now select the block tool located in the toolbar on the left. In the top grid, draw a square starting from the point where the two blue lines intersect. Once you've created a nice square, press enter. You've now created a platform for you to stand on. Depending on the version of Hammer you are using, you might need to apply a texture to it. On the sidebar on the left of the program, you can find the texture browser. Open it and select a developer ground texture by typing def in the search box. Double click the ground texture. The texture browser automatically closes. Now sway your mouse towards the Apply Current Texture tool in the toolbar. Make sure you have the platform selected and click the tool once. The platform should now have a texture on it. Now you can't export the map without a sky box. So let's create one. Select the block tool again and drag a box over the existing platform. Make sure it bleeds two squares over it. Make the block larger in the side view panel. When you're done, go to the texture browser and search for Skybox. 
scroll all the way down until you see this particular texture. Double click it and press enter to create the block with the texture applied to all the sides. Now right click the block in the top view panel and click make hollow. A dialog box appears. For now just click OK. You now have a skybox surrounding the platform. Now you have to add a player spawn. Click the entity tool and click on the middle of the platform. If hammered is configured correctly, a little guy looking like Gordon, who is somehow even more mute, would appear. This is a info player start entity, meaning that this is the spot the player will spawn at. Now click the guy. In the top view, hold shift and drag the entity to the left. You've now duplicated the entity. Double click it and type in the upper text box, light. Click apply and exit the window. Drag the newly created light source up a little. And that's it! Time to compile your incredibly basic map! Click the controller icon that is called Run Map. Set these settings to fast and click OK. Your map is now compiling. The duration of this is heavily dependent on how fast your computer is. Mine is pretty fast, so it's done in mere seconds. <coughs> I don't even know why that... I don't, I don't... It's not much, but it is something to get you started. I hope this video was informative. If not, well, there are probably people who can explain it much better than I could ever do, so be sure to check their channels out too. Just remember that anyone has to start somewhere, and this could be the start of something awesome. Okay, Google, we're gonna get married, right? Congratulations, that's wonderful news. Wait, you didn't know?